This video will concisely cover 12 of the most common acronyms and terminology in programming. Just the basics so that you can talk intelligently, get that interview, and then communicate properly with your coworkers. Note, some of these may never be used by your coworkers, but are specifically used by HR trying to see if you really know the lingo of your industry. S A A S. That's software as a service. The Google G Suite is a classic example. Also, Microsoft Office 365 Cloud, um, Amazon Web Services, AWS. These are all software that is only in the cloud. You don't have to download any software. It's usually all browser-based. Software as a service companies are everywhere. 38% of businesses already say that they're running completely on software as a service software. And 73% say that they plan on doing so by the end of 2021. Software as a service business had a global earnings estimated at $72 billion, billion dollars in 2018. They expected to be over $113 billion by in 2021. Function as a service, F-A-A-S. Function as a service, uh, also known as serverless computing. Uh, it is an option for deploying applications in the cloud. Examples, uh, Amazon Alexa and resizing images and ETL pipelines or processes. Managing servers is no longer your problem. You end up creating your function, putting it on a server, and then everything is passed to it like a REST service so that uh, the server can then process it. You have to send it everything it needs to know, and then it does the process and it sends you back the function result. Uh, the nice thing about FAAS is then you don't have to worry about managing your servers. You can say, okay, we're doing image resizing. We're going to create the function, put it up in the cloud, and then if for whatever reason you have a spike of growth, uh, your service provider then just has more servers uh, spin up to handle the demand. The provider handles the horizontal scaling for you. You only pay for what you use. SRS, Software Requirements Specification. Need I say more? It's a document that describes what software will do and how it will be expected to perform. CTO and CIO, you better know this one. That's the top of the technology chain. Chief Technology Officer or Chief Information Officer. Asynchronous versus synchronous. Some languages are one, some languages are the other. PHP is mostly and usually synchronous. So if we run it here with the debug on, you can see it takes one second and then it does do things one, two, three, four in the order that we would expect for a synchronous action. In JavaScript, JavaScript is an asynchronous language. Here's my little tiny JavaScript file. Let's see. One, there it's nine, two, there it's 18, three, it's inside the get number function, it's still 18, five, it skipped four because it's asynchronous, it's 18, and then four shows up and now it's 808. So if you are expecting your variables to be set in synchronous order, you can have a real problem in JavaScript. You need to keep that in mind when you're dealing with a asynchronous language. Next one, agile development. This is actually my favorite way of developing software. You plan, develop, deploy, and then you get feedback from the end user. And then based on that feedback, you plan, develop, deploy, Get feedback. CRUD describes the four basic operations of persistent storage. Create, read, update, delete. This maps directly to SQL commands in databases to insert, select, update, delete. In REST APIs, 
This maps to HTTP methods post, get, put, delete. While the CRUD acronym is the most popular, there are similar alternatives. Cruddle, Bread, Dave, and Crap. But basically, you don't need any of Dave's crappy bread. You only need to remember CRUD. CDF and CSV. CDF is a much older term, but uh, it is still used today. It stands for Comma Delimited Format, which can also be said as CSV, Comma Separated Values. And this is what uh, is usually exported from SQL and then imported into spreadsheets. ETL Pipeline, Extract, Transform, and Load. This is a way of migrating data to a SQL database. Most of the time it's used to migrate into SQL. Extract, you're pulling the data from multiple sources and then transforming, you're then taking the raw data and transforming it into the way that the SQL database is expecting, and then you're loading into the SQL database. Uh, there's now also ELT, which is the same words, but in a different order of extract, load, and transform. With the internet of things and the fact that we have data coming from so many different sources nowadays, such as phones, tablets, television, uh, YouTube channels are now on television channel, uh, television. You have data coming from all these different sources and sometimes ETL processes, the transform process can take a lot of time. And if the transform process is taking too much time, that really slows down the entire process. So what some servers are starting to do is they're saying, okay, extract the data, load the data to the SQL database into a uh, original format, and then transform it once it's in SQL. GUI, UI and UIX. Right now you'll see UI and UIX a whole lot more often, but in the old days they used to say GUI or GUI, that stood for Graphical User Interface. Now UI is User Interface, and UIX is User Interface Experience. They're actually uh, slightly different and whole different career sets. The next one is RDBMS, Relational Database Management System. And here I'm gonna show a very simple couple of tables. Databases are defined with parent and child tables. For example, this is a one-to-many where you might have one dog owner might own multiple dogs. In which case, uh, all tables have a primary key, like the UID, and the dogs will have the primary key, but then will be related via the dog owner UID to the dog owner's table. I'm gonna go over this very quickly, and if you want more details and example data and SQL scripts showing how to do inner joins, let me know in the comments below. Here's another parent table, dog parks, and this is a, down here, the X dogs to dog parks is a many to many table. And what this allows is, whereas here you have dog owners with multiple dogs, there might be multiple dogs that go to multiple dog parks. So for that, you need a many to many table to link them. And here you see the two foreign keys linking the dogs and the dog parks. This is what it looks like in an entity graph. Dog owners, dogs, dog parks, and the mini to mini table, where this table shows it's connected to both tables. The last programming terminology is Scrum, S-C-R-U-M. It's always shown in all uppercase. However, it is not an acronym. It is another type of development methodology for software. Um, it's very popular. There are many, many books written on it. And basically, you end up with a product owner that represents the customer and other stakeholders. Then you have the Scrum team, which are the developers and programmers. And lastly, you have the Scrum master. That's the person that understands everything about Scrum methodology and processes and leads the Scrum team. Now, because every video should end with a joke, a man is in a hot air balloon and he realizes he's completely lost. 
he lowers his balloon to a field where he sees somebody and he shouts down, hello, I'm supposed to be at a client and I'm gonna be late. I don't know where I am, can you help me? The guy in the field looks up and says, sure thing. He walks around a little and then he says, all right, you're 32 feet in the air and you're at 38.7294 latitude, negative 74.88732 longitude. The guy in the balloon looks down and says, let me guess, you're a programmer, right? Well, yes, I am. How'd you guess? Well, I'm sure you're technically correct. However, I still have no idea where I am and I'm gonna be late to see my client. The man below says, you must be a project manager. I am, how'd you know? Well, you don't know exactly where you are or where you're going. You chose a suboptimal method of meeting your client needs. You made promises you don't know how to keep and expect me to solve your problems. The fact is, you're in the exact same position you were before we met, yet somehow now it's my fault. Have a great day. Subscribe for more on the business of programming.